In today's video of my HTML series, we're going to cover document and website structure. And in particular, we're going to cover like the basic sections of a document, HTML for structuring the content. So like using different HTML elements to structure your content across the page, how you would kind of plan out a simple website and different things like that. And this could be particularly helpful if you're like, okay, I want to build this website, but I don't even really know where to start. Well, there's kind of some core sections of websites that you tend to use. And by just using some HTML and structuring this website, it might help you kind of fill the rest in and provides you a kind of nice starting place. Okay. So let's use this Mozilla Developer Network article to dive in to kind of the basic sections of a document first. So number one is going to be the header. And the header is usually a big strip across the top with a big heading, logo, or perhaps a tagline. This usually stays the same from one page to another. And then you also have a navigation bar. This will link to a website's main sections. So this might be a menu button or some different links or tabs. Like the header, this content usually remains consistent from one page to another. Having inconsistent navigation on your website will just lead to confusion, frustrating users, and just leading to an overall poor user experience. Many web designers consider the navigation bar to be part of the header rather than an individual component, but that's not a requirement. In fact, some also argue that having the two separate is better for accessibility reasons, as screen readers can read the two features better if they are separate. Okay, so you have your header and navigation bar, and sometimes these are kind of combined together. And then you also have your main content. So a big area in the center that contains most of the unique content of a given web page. And I'll show examples of these in just a few minutes here. For example, if the user has a video they want to watch, so say you're on YouTube, the video is going to be like the big main center part of your web page there. Or if you're reading a blog, it could be the main story. And it mentions that this is one page that will definitely vary from page to page or one section that will vary from page to page because depending on what part of the page, like the content of that page is of course going to change. And then you may also have a sidebar. So this could be some peripheral information. So it's not kind of your main content. It's like off to the side a bit and sidebar. So for this, it might be info, links, quotes, ads. Usually this is contextual to what is contained in the main content. And there are also some cases where some recurring elements like a secondary navigation system. So you might have a side navigation bar and then you may also have a footer so it's a strip across the bottom of the page that generally contains some of the fine print any copyright notices or some contact information it's a place to put common information like the header but usually that information is not critical or secondary to the website itself the footer is also sometimes used for seo purposes by providing links for quick access for popular content so here's an example of a typical website so up here at the top, you might see your header. This is like the main title of the website. If it was my website, it might be like Code Ryan right at the top. And then right here, you can see this is going to be the navigation bar. So someone could click on home, our team, projects, or contact and navigate to different pages. This is going to be your main content here. And then over on the right is going to be a sidebar. And then you're going to have the footer here at the bottom. Now, HTML gives you some different elements for structuring this content. And as this mentions here, it says the example above, it isn't pretty, but it is perfectly fine for illustration purposes of these kind of main sections. We need to use and respect semantics to use the right element for the right job to lay out these different sections. And this is because visuals don't tell the whole story. We use color and font size to draw sighted users attention to most useful parts of the content, like the navigation menu and related links. But what about visually impaired people who might not understand concepts of like pink or large font? Well, in your HTML code, you can mark up sections of content based on their functionality. You can use elements that represent the sections of content described above unambiguously, unambiguously, and assistive technologies like screen readers can recognize those elements and help with tasks like find the main navigation, find the main content. And it says to implement such semantic markup, HTML provides dedicated tags that you can use to represent such sections. For example, you have a header element, a nav element, as you can see here. 
you have a main element as well as within that main, you might use different article or section elements to kind of break this up as well as div elements. And then you can use an aside for a sidebar, which is often placed within a main element. And then you also have a footer element as well. So to go in a little bit more detail for these, the main element is for content that is unique to the current page. It says use the main element only once per page and put it directly inside the body element. Ideally, this shouldn't be nested within other elements. And then for the article element, it encloses a block of related content that makes sense on its own without the rest of the page. For example, a single blog post. And then for a section element, it's similar to the article, but it is more for grouping together a single part of the page that constitutes one single page or functionality, like a mini map or a set of article headlines and summaries or a theme. It's considered best practice to begin each section with a header. Also note that you can break articles up into different sections or sections up into different articles, depending on the context. So an article should be like a standalone independent piece of content. You don't really need more context to understand an article or the content within an article. But for a section here, as it says, it's more for grouping together kind of parts of a page. Now you also have the aside element, and this contains content that is not directly related to the main content, but can provide additional information indirectly related to it. And we also have your header element, and it represents a group of introductory content. If it is a child of the body, it defines the global header of the web page. But if it's a child of an article or a section, it defines a specific header for that section or article. And it mentions, try not to confuse this with titles and headings. So you might have a header element within an article. So it's gonna be kind of your introductory content of your article, but this might include like an H2 element within it, okay? And you also have the navigation element and this just contains the main navigation functionality for your web page. And then the footer represents the group of end content for a page. Now you also have non-semantic wrappers. So sometimes you'll come across situations where you can't find an ideal semantic element to group some items together or to wrap some content. Sometimes you might want to just group a set of elements together to affect them all in a single entity with some CSS or JavaScript. For cases like these, HTML provides div and span elements. You should use these preferably with a suitable class attribute to provide some kind of label for them so they can be easily targeted. Span elements are inline, non-semantic elements, which you should use only if you can't think of a better semantic text element to wrap your content. And then a div element is going to be a block level, non-semantic element. So a div is going to take up an entire line on your web page, and all content next to it is going to go to the next line. A span is going to be an inline element. It's not going to take up an entire line and it's going to go kind of within a line. Okay. Hence inline element. And it mentions that you should also only use a div when you can't use a more semantic element, like an article, a section or something like that. Now you also have line breaks and horizontal rules. So for these, it mentions that two elements that you might occasionally want to use are the BR and HR element. So the BR element, the line break element, creates a line break in a paragraph. It is the only way to force a rigid structure in a situation where you want a series of fixed short lines. So in this example here, they're saying this is a poem. And if you want to add a line break after each line right here, well, you need to use this BR element because without this element, HTML is just going to close that white space together and just put a normal space between this and not add a break. Okay, so you can use the BR here to make sure that this gets broken onto a new line. So you can see after Odell here, we have this BR. So it tells your browser to display the kind of next piece of content on the next line. And then same thing right after HTML here, right after HTML here, it breaks onto another line because we have this BR element here. Now you can do a very similar thing with the HR element, but with these, they create a horizontal rule and then document that denotes a thematic change in the text. 
So for example, you might have a paragraph and then you might use an HR element and then you might have another paragraph following that. And what that would look like on your page is your first paragraph and then you would have a horizontal line going all the way across your page and then your next paragraph. So this is ways to kind of break up your text with a horizontal line here. So those are kind of the basic fundamentals of breaking up your website into a semantic structure in which you have like a main header, a navigation bar, a sidebar, your main content, and then you might have different sections within this content. And it might be all within this article of text, as well as a footer down here. All of these are nice kind of semantic ways to structure your website. And then you can also use BR tags to add specific breaks in your content and move things to the next line. And then also you can use HRs to add kind of horizontal lines in your content as well. So hopefully that gives you a good idea on how to semantically structure your webpage. And I'll see you in that next one.